Alright, hello and welcome back. My name is Cameron Kirk and this is part two in my series of videos on DE10 Nano projects. Um, in this video we're going to be doing a walkthrough of how to build uh, and uh, install uh, Linux onto the DE10 Nano. Um, so this walkthrough is going to be following along um, the guide found on this repository. Um, if you want to just jump over to this repository and give it a try yourself, go right ahead. The link is in the description. If you are here for the walkthrough, then stick with me and we will get through this. Um, okay, so uh, this is actually my second time trying to do this live demonstration of completing all the things in this guide. Um, the first time I, well, I did it the first time not recording. And then I tried to record and do it, and then uh, lots of terrible things happened, and I think I just started getting tired, and I wasn't able to do it, and I had to scratch all one hour and 20 minutes of the footage. Um, since then, I reinstalled everything, and I think I have this process pretty much streamlined, so I'm going to try and keep the duration of the video short. Um, okay, so one important thing, well, another thing, uh, I currently have a pull request on this repository. I'm still waiting for my changes to be accepted, but I'm going to invest in this repository. I think that the wiki has a lot of really valuable knowledge in here, um, but there are some small things that were not um, correct. Um, there were some mistakes that I saw, and I'd like to help with that, starting with this first pull request where I can't even pull request... Um, the wiki pages. Um, anyways, we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to focus on doing this walkthrough. So um, yeah, let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to skip the getting started. I'm going to tell you how to get started. Let me open my OneNote. And uh, one of the things about this tutorial is you will need to do all of these things from either a virtual machine running Ubuntu or some sort of Linux, Debian, whatever it might be. Um, so you can do that using VirtualBox, or you can go ahead and get the Ubuntu app like I did here. Um, the link will be in the description. Uh, and I've talked about making a tutorial on how to install this before. This is Windows Subsystem for Linux, of course. Um, but I decided not to because um, I knew that this is sort of like new technology and they're still updating it. So for example, the installation instructions document has changed uh, just last month. So very, very recent. So I don't see the point in making a video on this if this is gonna change. Um, but what you need to do is the link will be in the description. Um, hop over here and get this installed. And after you complete all of these instructions, what this allows you to do, I'm gonna close this down. And as a matter of fact, I am going to uninstall this because we're going to, un we're, and this is going to delete my entire file system for Ubuntu. And that's fine. The only thing I had on there was um, the, uh, the walkthrough. I'm going to remove that. And once you complete this guide, a link is in the description, um, you can go onto the Microsoft Store. And again, this is just how I'm doing this walkthrough. Uh, you just need to get access to a Linux terminal. Um, you know, with uh, sudo apt-get, you can get things installed and you can run make and you can do symbolic linking because a lot of the repositories are gonna require that. Um, but don't worry, you don't have to do any symbolic linking in this video. Uh, it's all done for you, luckily. So you can hop over to the Microsoft Store, type in Ubuntu, and I am using the Ubuntu app. So it just says Ubuntu. They have, uh, you know, 20.04 long-term support. They also have, I believe, like 18 dot something. Uh, we're just going to use plain old Ubuntu. And I'm going to get this installed right now. I might have to pause the recording for this to finish installing. Might take, I think, like 2 gigabytes of download. All right, let me pause the recording and we'll come back when this is done installing. Okay, we are back and that did not take too long. That was actually rather quick and it was only 500 megabytes. I'm gonna click open. So we're gonna use this to basically set up a cross compiler, an ARM cross compiler. And this is going to be how we're going to make our images that we can burn onto an SD card. 
Um, while this is setting up, this is my first time launching this, uh, this app because I uninstalled the previous one. Go ahead and link will be in the description. Download Rufus. Uh, if you haven't used this before, Rufus uh, creates bootable USB drives and we're going to use this to flash our micro SD card. Um, but we'll come back to that later. We don't need that right now, but if you would like to start that download, go ahead and download that. All right, so it's asking us to create a username. I am going to go ahead and change this font size to a larger font size. That's too big. Is it too big? Yeah, it's too big. Let's do 20. Okay, so I give it a username, one that you can remember. Give it a password, one that you can remember. There we go and it's going to drop us right in here. Now the first thing you do have to do is go sudo uh, update. Oh wait, is it apt get update? It's apt get update. Um, type in your password to authenticate. Um, the reason we do this is because the app that you download is actually has no updates on it at all. Um, we're not going to do the upgrade. We're just going to do an update um, and this will allow us to get a uh, the latest list of packages available to install. Okay, great. Now that we have that, we're going to be doing the universal bootloader. I do recommend you spend some time reading through these other documents. If uh, yeah, there's a lot of good knowledge in this repository, but I'm gonna just cut straight to the chase, and we are going to get what we need done. Um, so let me, I have a link in my notes. We need to install a few packages before we continue. Starting with, I believe it is this link. Now I did find, nope, it is not this link. Dun, dun, dun. Here it is, ARM9 tool chain. So I found this on my own. Um, the link is in the description if you want to copy exactly what I'm doing. We're going to copy this first command, paste it on here and get that going. I'm going to say yes to install that. Um, <clears throat> and then after that is done, we are going to get this next one uh, down here. This is going to install our GCC compiler for um, ARM. Um, I soon discovered that the, uh, I believe it's in setting up the development environment, these exact same packages to download and install are described in this repository somewhere. I don't remember where. Um, yeah, and we do something similar to this. The point is I got this to work without following what they say to do. I kind of just made it up my own way. So uh, if you're following along, you're doing this on Windows 10, you want to make your own ARM com cross compiler, just stick with me and we will get through this and it will work. Um, all right, I will come back. Oh, I was just about to pause the video. Now that that's done, uh, again, link is in the description. We're going to get this bottom one here. Make sure we're recording. Oh, my head is kind of in the way. We're getting this bottom one for the Aritia Aria Fox G20 board, whatever, install it. Say yes, and off it goes. All right, so we'll let that keep going. Um, let's hop, hop back over here. We're going to be installing U-Boot, which is a the universal bootloader. Um, let's just cut to the chase. We need to clone this repository. So um, they keep saying do this CD, and then the token is like $DEWD. Uh, when I try this, it seems to take me to my home directory, but I don't know what the difference is between doing this and the tilde. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm also just kind of stalling for time to let that finish. Uh, so just do everything in your home directory. That'll keep things really easy. Um, if you want to move somewhere else later, you can, but I'm just going to stick with doing it from the home directory. So go ahead and clone that repository. Um, I don't think this one's too big, so I'm not going to pause the recording. Um, the next thing that they do is they check out a specific version. 
When I did this on my very first attempt, I checked out the latest version. I desired to use the latest version, and so I checked out the latest version. Um, and then when I did the live demo on my previous attempt, the failed attempt, I did that again, and things went horribly wrong. So I think for this walkthrough, just to minimize mistakes and get this walkthrough completed successfully, I am going to do the exact releases that they describe in this walkthrough. Um, if you would like to try on your own time, um, either now or later on, uh, using the newer versions of the different repositories, go ahead. Just be mindful that when you do that, you just need to stay consistent uh, for the other instructions that follow in this guide. So we're going to skip the list, the available tags. We're going to jump right into checking out this branch. Oh, we need to change directory into our newly cloned repository and then check out that branch. There we go. That'll take a minute. Okay. And then they create a new local branch. So they get all the files contained in this branch and then they give it a, a new local branch name. Um, And then as they tell you to make changes, they make you uh, sort of use Git to track those changes. Um, since this is not a Git tutorial, I am going to uh, do the bad thing, which is I, I'll, I'll make the local repository. I guess it's not too much trouble. Um, and then they're using nano. <clears throat> But what I like to do is I like to say code dot, and that is going to open my installation of Visual Studio Code um, on Windows 10. Take a sip of coffee. There it goes. Shouldn't take too long to get into it. All right, we're going into the include folder. Let me close this other window. Okay, so we're going into config, config distro command dot h and we're gonna make some modifications. And this is in the include folder. I suppose it would have been quicker to find it using nano or vim. But uh, I just like to show that you can do this. What is it? Why did it show up down there? Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay, we're okay. Config distro config. What, did I not go in the includes folder? include config distro config distro there it is config underscore distro underscore boot command I have no idea why I couldn't find that earlier all right and then they're saying it at the bottom it looks like this so at the very I'm already at the very bottom of this file it looks like this and we want it to look like that Sorry, I had to pause the recording because I had to sneeze and I did not want to sneeze on the microphone. Okay, so we're going to take from here down to here. Oh, I want to make this font size bigger. I also need to mute my phone. All right. We're gonna put it on this side and we'll put the code on the other side. Close the Explorer. All right, so we're gonna copy this. Uh, don't copy the whole thing because uh, you'll notice at the, oh, I guess they are the same. I had, they're slightly different. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just gonna do the quotation marks. That's what's really changed here. We'll paste it right there and we'll save it. And very good. So now that is saved. We'll minimize that. 
and we'll come back over here. It gives an explanation of what we just changed. It is worth reading through what this has done. <clears throat> and then they're going to add those changes to the local repository. So I guess I'll do the same. Oh, I never set up Git because this is a fresh installation of Ubuntu. So all you have to do is type in config global user dot email. Um, we're going to say, I don't know, we'll use this one. Okay, and then git config global user dot name Cameron end quote. Okay, so now we're gonna git commit and it worked. Cool. So they want us to assign a permanent MAC address. We will go ahead and humor them and do that. So you just copy that make command and paste it in. By the way, I am using right click. You just right click on anywhere on the terminal screen and it pastes whatever's in your clipboard. And that worked. So now we're gonna run that tool. And here is our generated MAC address. So we'll just save that for later. Now we're going to into include configs folder SOF FPGA common.h. So that is in the include config. There we go. SOF FPGA. lot of files in here. I think it's fun looking through it like this. Dot underscore common dot h. Here it is. And then I'll close the explorer. If we go all the way to the bottom, you'll see that it looks like this and they want you to add one more line containing the line for setting the MAC address. And then lastly, you also need to copy the generated MAC address. Um, I noticed elsewhere in the documentation, it says <clears throat> that if you are, um, that this is actually bad practice to just generate a MAC address like this. It, it talks about like, if you're using this in production, you should really just buy your own MAC address, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, but since this is, uh, you know, just us here, I guess it's not an issue to assign a machine address. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to, it tells us we can list out the configurations. These are all the configurations, don't care. And we're going to prepare a configuration file using this make command. So we'll run that make command. Everything should work fine for you here. <clears throat> it's this next one. Oh, and then it says if you want to do some fine tuning, you can use this menu config. We're not gonna do that step. Now, before you run this build step here, one other thing that you will have to run, and the link is in the description, um, but it is this link. <clears throat> So it's not this link. Close that. It is the Stack Overflow question. Yeah, 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 right here. So we're gonna run, and the link is in the description for the Stack Overflow answer. We're gonna run this cross compile export and this arch export. So let's copy that, paste it in here. And then we'll copy that and we'll paste it in here. And then I drop my mouse, bear with me. Okay, so just run those two commands and then you can run your build command here. And it goes pretty quick, but it does take a minute. So I, well, I'll leave it recording, but I might just fast forward through this part at double speed. Okay, we're back and that did not take too long. Um, so we're ready to go to the next step 
which is building the kernel. Now this is this requires a, a sort of a bigger download. Okay, here it is, the library dependencies. We already installed this, we can skip that step and we are gonna go on to cloning the Linux SOF FPGA repo. Now, make sure before you run that command, you go back to your home directory. I did a cd dot dot there and then paste in that command to clone that git repository. Now, uh, depending on your internet connection, this will take a minute. I believe it's two gigabytes, something like that. So I am going to speed this part of the recording up and we'll come back when it is done. Okay, we're back and I went ahead and paused the recording because of course git clone is going to work. You don't need to witness it running without errors. Um, okay, so now that we have that repository downloaded, we are going to change directories into it. And I'm typing uh, Linux, or I typed I L I N and then tab to autocomplete, if you don't know about that trick. Um, okay, so we're in that folder. <clears throat> we can list all the available branches. I will do that step here because it's a little bit different. Um, so we're going to do git checkout 5.12. So here it is. I'm going to copy that. We're going to do git check check out and then paste that there and push enter. So we're going to check out that branch. Should not take too long to do this now that we have mostly everything downloaded. And then we are going to make the configuration. So we're going to copy that command and Paste it there. And that should work without an error. So yeah, this recording I'm really sh shooting for. Okay, we're gonna open the configuration. So now we have to open the configuration window. So we'll just type that command. I'm going for no mistakes and no errors in this recording. I really hope I get this demo done without a problem. So I encourage you to read through this guide on your own, but I'm just going to cut to the chase. We need to go into general setup and we need to go into automatically build and we need to uncheck automatically append version. Uncheck that. Very good. So I use the down arrows to highlight it and then I push the space bar to space it out. Okay. Next, we need to go into file systems. So I'm going to push the right arrow key, push enter for exit, and we're going to go down to file systems. Oh wait, uh, file systems. Yeah, we're in the right spot. Let's keep going. File systems, we're gonna scroll down. File systems, push enter on that. And we need to enable overlay file system support and all options under it. So. I believe it's sort of towards the bottom. We're gonna go to overlay file system support, spacebar, spacebar. We want the asterisk or the splat symbol for the system built-in default. Uh, there we go. All the options underneath it. There we go. So now that we have that, let's scroll down to the next one and we need to enable configs. This should already be enabled, but if not, do it. So every time I do this step, it's already enabled, but we will follow the guide and make sure. So I went down to sudo file systems and I went to user space driven configuration. Yeah, it's enabled. It's never not enabled. Okay, we're gonna push the right arrow key and push exit. Um, on my free time, my very first attempt, I did attempt to, oh, keep exiting until you get a window that asks to save config, um, choose yes. Um, so we're gonna push the right arrow key, exit, right arrow key, exit, and say yes. Um, my first attempt, I did try to do the Wi-Fi, but that is, um, that's gonna take some work, so we're not gonna do that in this video here. So we're ready to build. So we'll copy this command, and we'll build. And it should go off without a hitch, as long as you're within the same session, um, that you did those export commands, uh, it should be fine. If not, go ahead and issue those export commands again. And we will come back when this is done. I believe this takes a minute to do. So yeah, I am going to leave the recording running so that you can witness it working for me at the time of this recording. 
and I hope that you get the same results as I do. If you don't, I will be in the comment section trying to help out. I will also be active on this GitHub repository, um, doing what I can to answer questions with issues that you might have. Um, yeah. Okay, so we'll let this uh, we'll let this build. And that worked successfully. So far, so good. Let's go to the next step. I'm going to be doing Debian for this walkthrough. So we need to get a couple of packages installed. Let's run that command. Say yes. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Excellent. And now we are going to make a directory from our home directory. So remember, go back to your home directory. There's my directory. We're going to make dir root fs. Um, and then we're going to change directories into root fs. Right? Oh, no. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to cd dot dot. Okay. So on this step, they're doing buster. Um, the very first time I did it, I was able to successfully get this to work with Bullseye, and then when I did the live demo, that didn't work. Once again, I'm just going to stick with what the um, repo currently shows for the walkthrough, and we're just going to paste in that command, and it is going to uh, install, retrieve and install our root file system for Debian Linux. Let's let this load. All right, next up we are going to copy in Kimu. Kimu is an emulator that's going to allow us to ch root into that root file system. All right, so we are now in a session in our file system that has not been loaded yet. Um, and we're going to install some more things, including finishing Bootstrap. So we'll paste in that command and let it run. Let's let this load. All right, so that finished successfully. Let's keep going here. Uh, we're not doing Arch Linux, so skip these steps and proceed. Uh, we're gonna install Vim. I do like Vim when Visual Studio Code is not an option. So we will get that going. Uh, and then we're going to change Etsy host name. And uh, let's stick with what they called it, which is DE10Nano. That's good for me. Vim should not take a long time to install. Okay, so Vim, Etsy, host name. And we are going to dollar D, or sorry, D dollar to delete that line. We're going to insert with an I, DE dash, wait, DE 10 dash nano, escape, colon, WQ. All right. Next up, we're going to set the password for the root user. We're going to call it root, just like they describe in the steps. Very good. And we're going to edit Etsy fstab. All right, vim Etsy fstab. All right, we're gonna d dollar. We're gonna i. We're gonna paste. Escape, escape. I. Right click, edit, paste. There it is. Escape colon wq. All right. We're going to enable the serial console, copy that, paste it in there, awesome. We're going to get the locals, copy that, paste it in there, we'll let this install. I'm going to copy the next command while we wait. There it goes, we'll paste in the next command. 
All right, we're going to look for en underscore utf8. En, what is it? En underscore us dot utf8. Uh, there it is. I almost picked the wrong one. I believe it's spacebar to select. Yep. And then right arrow key, left arrow uh, tab, and then push enter on OK. And then select ENUSUTF8, push enter on that. Let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard for Ethernet. We're going to set up Ethernet. We need to um, add the following to the file Etsy network interfaces under the line that says source directory. Okay. This is still loading though. Um, I don't remember how long this step should take. Uh, I'm gonna pause the recording just in take just in case. All right, we're back. That did not take too much longer. Um, we're gonna go to Etsy network interfaces. So Vim Etsy network interfaces. And underneath this line, I'm going to do insert, enter, right click up here, edit, paste. There we go. Escape, escape, colon, WQ. Okay. Um, we're knocking this out. Source listing, we're going to copy this. We're going to edit Etsy apt source.list. Vim Etsy. Um, apt source dot list uh, we're going to push end i enter right click edit paste escape colon wq i'm saying the commands out loud in case if you don't know how to use vim um copy open ssh paste it in there While that loads, we're going to enable root login over SSH. So I'm going to copy this line. We are so close. We're so close to burning our SD card image. Etsy SSH SSHD underscore config. Come on. There we go. Vim Etsy SS. Oops, too many slashes. SSH SSH underscore config. Oh, SSH D underscore config. All right, I'm just gonna edit. Oh, I should do insert. So I, and then edit, paste, and then escape, WQ, enter. Okay, we added that line in. Add a user to do, this is something I'd like to make a pull request to fill out. Um, we're gonna skip that. Uh, have GED, I don't. I don't know what this is, but let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, it says it's going to speed things up. Um, entropy seeding speedups. Okay. And install any other package. So we'll do this one next. Okay. Setting up the Wi-Fi. We'll skip that. Now time for cleanup. Okay, that finished. So now we're going to clean things up. Right? What's the last thing we did? Yeah. We're going to clean things up. App to clean. We're going to remove Kimu. Okay, and we're going to exit from ch root. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a tarball of this uh, file system. 
And uh, to do that, we need to be inside, well, we don't have to be inside the root FS, but in order for this command to work, we do, because they're using dot for meaning this directory here as the target, and this is the destination. Um, I'm going to replace this $dewd with my actual fully qualified system path. So in order to figure that out, we are going to do pwd. That's going to tell you where you are right now. So we're going to sudo, sudo tar dash cjpf, sudo tar dash cjpf space, uh, the path, and then, so we're going to do, um, well, yeah, we can type it all the way out. Kirk root fs. Oh, uh, no, we don't want to go to the root fs. We want it to go right here. And it's going to be root fs dot tar dot bz bz2 and then space dot meaning this folder we're in right now push enter authenticate and we'll let this go now I believe this takes a minute um, at least it does on my system so we will let this run and we'll come back when it has completed. Okay, we are back and that is done. So, oops, um, I think I must have hit a shortcut that paused the recording. Okay, we're back and that is done. Let's go back to directory, hit ls, and there is our zipped file system. Awesome. Um, so that completes the Debian root file system. We're going to be, ex don't be extracting this. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Let's go on to the next step, creating the SD card image. All right. So this is the final home stretch here, and this is where if I go too quickly, I'm going to make mistakes. So we're going to be very careful with these last few steps here. We're going to make a directory called SD card. SD card. Cool. We're going to go into that directory. Oops. All right. So we're going to create a one gigabyte image file. So we're going to copy that command and paste it right there. Should not take long to execute. And then we're going to view the visible device. So there it is on dev loop zero. Now it is possible for you to be on a different loop. And if that number is different, you should use that number instead, whatever pops up for you. Since mine is dev loop zero, I don't have to modify the commands. I can just follow along. I do encourage you to read through this, but let's keep going. We're going to use fdisk. And we're going to do p to list the partitions. And it looks like that. So ours matches theirs. Cool. So just follow these sequence of commands. We're going to do, um, let me see if I can move this. Uh, I guess we'll do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, put it on that side. Bring this back. Okay, that works. All right, we're going to do in, enter, P, enter, 3, enter, enter, plus 1, M, enter. All right, so when we type N, oh wait, no, it just looks like that. We're good. So matchy matchy. Good, good, good. All right, now we're going to do T, enter, A2, enter. There we go. From Linux to unknown, looking good. Now we're going to do N, enter, P, enter, 1, enter, enter, plus 2, 5, 4, N, capital M, enter. And it looks like that. Good job. Now we're going to do T, enter, 1, enter, B, enter. Okay, and now we have the W95, FAT32. Now we're going to make the root file partition, root file system partition. We're going to do N, enter, P, enter, 2, enter, enter, enter. And the rest of it has been allocated for Linux. All right, so now Check that the partitions are created. This is what I see when I type P. P. 
All right, everything's matching between the guide and our terminal. Um, so if we write the image file, uh, if the partitions are written to the image file, uh, we write W and it errors out and it kicks us out. But this is actually matching the results that they got. The error message tells us the partitions have been loaded yet by the kernel, which is indeed the case. If you type this, you don't see your partitions. But if you run this command and then you list the partitions again, now you see your partitions. Cool. So now we're going to create our file system. So we're going to do make fs t on dev loop 01. Uh, if you have a different number, you should modify this command. I do not, so I can just paste it in. And we're going to do partition 2 as Linux. Paste that in. There we go. And now we are going to write these partitions. So I don't have to modify this command. It's using the relative path. So it's saying in the folder above me, so that's my home directory, go to uBoot and then get this from uBoot and use that to create the bootloader partition. So let's paste that command in. Copy, paste. All right. And then now we are going to make a directory called FAT. We're going to mount that directory to loop 0 uh, P1, partition 1. So far, so good. Copy. And we're going to mount the partition to that directory. And then we are going to copy our kernel into that mounted partition. We're going to copy in the device tree. And we are, we're going to create this file. They're using echo to write out this file, which is fine by me. We'll just copy these commands. There we go. So now if I do a cat ext, we now have that file. We're going to make a folder inside our fat folder, and we're going to copy in that configuration file into that folder. Now we're going to unmount fat. Cool. So now for the final partition, our Linux partition, we're going to copy in Debian Linux file system. So we're going to make a directory for that. We're going to mount partition 2 to that folder. So now we're viewing that partition uh, when we go into ext4. We are going to go inside ext4 and we are going to sudo tar and I'm typing this one out instead of copy paste because I don't want to use their dollar DEW. I want to do the actual path. So I believe I can do dot dot slash root. Oh, uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash root fs dot tar dot bz2. Go ahead and push enter. Now this might take a moment, so I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, we are back and that is done. We're going to leave this folder and unmount the partition from that folder uh, by copying this command, copy, paste. Okay, so now we're gonna clean things up. Uh, these folders, because we unmounted the stuff we put inside are no longer visible. So these are just empty folders, these are just mount points. Um, we can remove them. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we can remove the, well, before I remove the loopback device, notice we have an SD card image here. Let's go ahead and delete the loopback device. I don't know if this is really necessary. I don't like doing this, but we can do that. All right, we're gonna stop here and we're gonna transfer this into Windows and we are going to use Rufus to burn it. And also that is a step that you can do for writing in Windows. 
Okay, so don't follow those. I didn't even recommend Rufus. Look at that. Okay, so PWD, and we have SD card here. So we're going to sudo cp. Um, the source is home, perk, SD card. Oh, wait, I'm already in this folder. So I can just say SD card image, and we're going to send it to MNT. C, this gets us our C drive. So that path right there that I just typed in, MNT or mount and then C drive, that gets you to right here. Um, so from here, we're going to go to users and then Kirk, oops, Kirk, and then documents, documents, and then uh, let's name it SD card dot IMG. Enter. Give it just a moment to copy over. I'm going to refresh my directory here. Okay, I think it says it's done. So if I scroll down, oh, I'm not in my documents. My mistake. Documents, SD card image, and that is today's date. Okay, good. So we're gonna open up Rufus. I believe it's gonna ask me to update, which I probably should have done before I started recording. We're gonna say yes. Oh, sorry, I had, um, uh, where is, let me get my SD card out. There it is. So go ahead and insert your SD card into your SD card reader. Give me just a second to plug that in. Okay, where's Rufus? There's Rufus. It does want an update. I'm gonna click download. I know you can't see that. Just bear with me. It popped up on my second screen. Close that. What is that? Oh yeah, I plugged in the SD card and it's trying to to open it. Put that in my downloads, I guess. Save. I'm gonna pause the recording. Okay, we're back, and here is my outdated version of Rufus, and it has selected my only SD card that is plugged in. We're gonna click this select button here. We're going to go to documents. We're going to find that image we created. Click open and click start. Click OK. It's warning us. Warning, warning. OK. And we'll let that write the image. I'm going to pause the recording. We'll come back when this is done. Okay, so that finished and it opened our SD card, but we can just close that. We can close this and eject the SD card. And let's go over to the tabletop. And we're going to insert the SD card. Oh, I didn't turn off autofocus. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Um, it should be fine. Okay, so. Over here is the power. Let me turn this over. Oh, I, I really don't like that autofocus. Give me one second to fix that. Configure video, camera control, turn off autofocus. Okay. All right. So we supply power on this side of the board, but before we do that, um, the other side of the board, if you plug in your micro USB cable here, this is the uh, USB to UART or UART USB communication. Um, so on this side of the board is the JTAG interface for programming and over here is for serial communication. Go ahead and plug that in and uh, once again before we supply power to the board, you should go install if you haven't already install putty um, I'm gonna go to start and type in putty and we are going to initiate a serial connection over that USB cable 
that we just plugged into the board. So I'm going to switch it into serial mode where we need to know what COM port it's communicating on. So if I right click the Windows icon and I go to Device Manager, of course it opens on my other screen, give me one second. Uh, under ports, we have COM3. Okay, so we're going to open a connection on COM3 with a baud rate of 115200. Click open. Okay, so it's connected. It's a dead terminal, which enter nothing happens. Let's go ahead and I'm going to supply power to the board. And we are, oh, and the auto boot worked. Wow, I wonder. Okay, well, we've done it. Um, uh, I have some stuff in my notes. The first and second time I've done this and I've gotten to this part, um, the auto boot did not work and I don't know why. Um, now, if the auto boot does not work for you and it does not start doing these, um, let's see if I can make this font size bigger. I should have thought of that. Uh, change settings, appearance, appearance font. Let's get it up to font size 20. Okay, apply. There we go. Now, if you are not getting these OKs while the Linux kernel boots Debian Linux, um, sometimes it'll get stuck on the U-boot boot uh, bootloader and you're at this console window and it's not booting your operating system. You're just sort of at this U-boot boot um, type of thing. It says login, but I'm going to hold off on just one second. Um, actually, no, no, I'll go ahead and log in. So I'm going to do root and root is my password and I am in. Cool. So this is where the walkthrough is going to end. I just wanted to show you how to get through these steps. Um, now, if you, okay, and then setting up Wi-Fi, we're not doing that. Okay, so if you got stuck at the U-boot screen, the command to get past that, the two things that helped me were, and they're not gonna work at this uh, prompt, but they were env grep cmd. Uh, I ran that command and that listed out a bunch of stuff. And then in that list, I saw run mmc underscore boot. And then as soon as you run that command from uBoot, um, this uh, run mmc boot, that will kick off booting up um, Linux. At least it did for me two times in a row when I did not get auto boot. I have no idea why auto boot worked for me this time. Um, I didn't do anything different between the previous two times. So, well, I take that back. Um, but in any case, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this one was a long one, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And I am looking forward to doing more videos in the future. Um, yeah, and we're going to be looking at, you know, uh, programming the HPS. Things that I'm interested in doing uh, a video on are... What if you don't want to boot uh, an operating system? Let's say you want to just write firmware code. Um, I believe you should be able to do that and then use U-Boot to uh, kick your program, your main.c off on the HPS because at the end of the day, it is just a microcontroller. You should be able to do it just like any other microcontroller. Another thing I'm interested in doing is flashing the FPGA from the HPS. Um, that is something I'm interested in doing. And, you know, communication between the HPS and FPGA, all these types of things. Um, I'd like to make videos on those soon. Uh, leave a comment below if, if you have any questions or you run into any troubles in this walkthrough. Um, also, feel free to interact on the GitHub repository. From what I can tell, the owner is active, so I believe the owner can help you out. And um, I will also try to keep a lookout on the GitHub if you have any questions there. Um, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.